This week's episode is sponsored by Ryan at Change. If you are looking to get involved in e-commerce and build a successful online business, then check out my good friend Ryan, who I have been working with the last few years and attended many events and retreats all around the world, spending time with members who are making some serious money. I have been promoting Ryan for a while now because I believe in what he does and not only has he helped and supported me build my own businesses, but I have seen firsthand how he helps and supports his members take their businesses to new levels and give them financial freedom. So if you are interested in getting into e-commerce and building successful online stores, then message Ryan on his Instagram at RyanJB to join his winning team. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got the legendary Mike Skinner. How are you, Mike? I'm good. I'm good. I'm um, slightly concerned about all your cables all over the floor. Um, Although you are a man uh, after my own heart, I think, Uh, because I've just finished making a film and uh, I didn't put sandbags on my lights and stuff fell over a lot. Yeah, but um, but you have to focus on the important stuff, don't you? Yeah, in that sense of you. So, <laughs> so if lights falls, mate, we'll, we'll deal with that problem exactly. if it comes. Exactly. Is, uh, absolute legend. Grew up listening to your stuff. Still listen to your stuff. Blinded by the lights. Yeah, fit, and you know it. Fit, but you know it. Um, just legendary stuff. Like just, I know you've got your number one albums, number one song. You were in the charts for many years. Mm. You just, like I say, a massive fan. It's an absolute honour to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, dry yeah. your eyes, mate. Fucking hell, another classic. Like, so many. But before we get into everything, I always like to go back to the start of my guests. Yeah. Get a bit of understanding about you, Mike, where yeah. you grew up and how it all began. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think the thing that really, uh, I guess, like defined me was that I was born in North London or or Barnet, depending on how you define London. Um, And when I was quite young, my my family moved to Birmingham. Uh, And so I kind of lived this um, slightly uh, dual life really where i was i was i went to school in birmingham but my dad was very much felt like a londoner and my brother actually seemed like a londoner as well because because he was that much older when we moved you know he was older than me so so yeah, I, I went to school in Birmingham. Uh and I don't think anyone really feels like they fit in. Or or I don't think it's uncommon for people to not feel like they fit in. But I certainly didn't feel like I fit in. Uh and I was always I was always into taking stuff apart. That's another thing I would say. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just, um, I think those are the things that, that define a person, you know, I think, I think whether or not you, you know, you know how like your pair, I feel like everyone's, everyone's trying to 
uh, make up for the mistakes that they feel like their parents made. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you don't know what mistakes your parents were making up for their parents making. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's difficult. Parents don't open up either. No. You only learn, it's learnt behaviours. Yeah. But your father was a lot older, was he not? Yes. What age was he? Yeah, that's another thing. He So he was, um, my mum was his second marriage. And so he was, yeah, he was, he was much older than my mum. Um, and he, yeah, the, th the, the things that he would say were more like, looking back on it, were more like what a grandparent would say. Do you feel as I if mean, you, look, you missed out on, like, a, I wouldn't say a father, your father was there, but do you feel as if yeah. you missed out on a father in a sort of way no, because it wasn't at your not. age? No, 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 the opposite, actually. I feel like I got a better dad. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't, I was never really into running about outside that much. I mean, we did. We used to get on our bikes and stuff, but um, I didn't need my dad to be in goal for me to take penalties so um no i i think that um yeah i genuinely felt like i had a he i don't know he just he just wasn't he just wasn't like other dads he was much more like yoda than a dad you know and and who wouldn't want yoda as their dad really what were you like at school just um did you feel different at school not really, no. I mean, um, I, I, uh, I didn't really. No, I mean, I think I was pretty. I, mean, I was talking to my mum the other the other night, and she was. We were talking about. Oh, we we're talking about um, my kids. That's right. And my mum, my mum said that I, I was always, I was always a performer. And I was. I was kind of like, well, no, I wasn't. I mean, I never wanted to be uh, like on the stage or anything like that. I, I wanted to, I wanted to be a producer. Like I wanted to make music, but I didn't, I didn't, I never saw myself as being an artist like that. Uh, but what I didn't realize was I was always showing off basically and that's what my mum was saying you were always a show off uh but i guess and so i guess when i ended up being a performer i was i was probably suited to it yeah as much as that makes me feel uh bad like a show off what i mean we hate what we are right why do you think that as a show see, we spoke about men and Never known, wouldn't like for me as well. I'm flying in life, but I never feel good enough. I mm. always feel something missing. There's always goals. We talk about being the best in the UK, being the best in the world. Yeah. But when I achieve those goals, it's like an emptiness, a loneliness. Mm. Yeah. And I've always thought that's where you would find this magic potion or whatever it is to fill, fulfill the pain or whatever it is we're chasing. I, I genuinely don't know myself. Yeah. I just know what I'm doing is the right thing for me. It makes sense. People are around yeah. me that feel better and do better. But there's always that element of something's missing. Yeah, I mean, when, when, you, um, when you become the biggest podcast in the world, you will, you will have a massive party and then you will suddenly realize that you're no happier and that will feel a bit weird for a while but it doesn't mean i think i think um i think when you learn that that success or or whatever your dreams are don't make you happy you you um you then sort of after that realize that you what does make you happy is trying trying to achieve your dreams that does make you happy so it's actually it is a it is about trying to be the number one podcast in the world 
but it's not about becoming the number one podcast in the world. You know, it's about the, it's about feeling like you, you can do it. So I think, I think that, that emptiness that, that, or that, that, um, thing that you're seeking out, it's kind of turning that into a positive for you, your, yourself and your, your families and the people that work for you's lives. Yeah. What, how was your grades at school? Uh, well, cause I know you played a lot of instruments, you've guitar, you've done a lot. Yeah. I, I played guitar for a while. Um, I mean, I'm certainly not, um, I'm not a musician really. I mean, I can, um, I can, uh, I can, you know, a bit like, uh, you know, I've got certain recipes that I can, I can cook, uh, but, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a chef. Um, I, um, I was always more into, th uh, taking, I mean, the sampling was the, uh, was the, uh, technology of, of, uh, of our time really. So it was, um, we were the, I guess we were the first generation that, that didn't really need to be a musician to make music. And, and I still, I still have, I still have that, that in me really. I, I, I'd prefer to be, to try to look down on my own music rather than, because, uh, you know, I, I'll write, I'll write a lot of songs and then I tend to put them away and, and then try and listen back to them as as a listener rather than I, I try to be the listener rather than the maker if that makes sense what was the first song you'd ever written well i mean um i never really uh i don't remember i mean i would have been my dad got me a keyboard when i was um probably seven or something and uh and i was uh, i don't remember a time when i wasn't writing songs I, I really uh i don't remember that before you know I, there was never um there was never a moment that i remember i was just always i was always doing it but di in different ways i for a while I, I mean i i used to write raps when i was um yeah probably about eight really uh, my brother used to listen to rap music and and I used to record myself trying to pretend to to do that and then and then as you say I as I there were I had different phases so for a while I I got into the guitar uh, and used to play the guitar and and then and then other times I was recording using uh, like I had a four track and like different sort of tape tape players and stuff and then and then i got really into house music and dance music and so it was a kind of um as the technology changed starting off literally with a casio keyboard and then going all the way up to sort of trying to actually be a uh, some kind of studio engineer guy whatever who was your inspiration because you're for me your music's genius because nobody's done it. It was never heard or seen before. Not my time on the planet anyway. It was different. And it, people gravitated towards that. So for me, again, it's, it's genius. What, your capabilities and your mindset of the writing and the producing and everything that you've done. It For me, you're a genius. But it's how did how were you doing it? How did you, who was your inspiration? Because it's different from anybody I've ever listened to. Yeah, I mean, I never really... Um... Well, I mean, probably my, someone like, uh, it would be someone like, uh, Thomas Bangalter, uh, and Daft Punk. I really, they had a huge impact on me. Uh, and then also rappers like, um, you know, and, and producers, Dr. Dre, um, I, I, uh, was obsessed. Yeah. Uh, DJ Premier before that. 
the, I was I was always actually more into producers than than rappers, even though I do I do I do love rappers. But it was always to me it was more about the whole thing rather than being like an MC and um, you know. And I've always I've always even with my stuff I've always to me the main thing is making the song and performing the song to me is is really just um kind of just turning up after that uh whereas i you know a lot of people are the other way around they're they're very much like the the performance is the thing and the the cd or you know the the uh the mix the album is um is kind of is really a way of getting to the performance but it's uh, because of technology, I think, because I'm so into technology with music, it's 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 really about the uh, it's about the song to me. So um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a geek, really, um, compared with I probably what what you might expect. Do you have a photographic memory? No, I have a really bad memory, and I know that because it, it takes me ages to to learn my own songs. <laughs> Is that you trying to find perfection? Well, I think, uh, yeah, maybe I guess I am a perfectionist, but I'm also just I just really ha hate not knowing what I'm doing when I'm supposed to be doing it. I mean, to shows, I can't imagine anything worse than being on stage not knowing the words to the song that is literally a nightmare to me that's the sort of thing that um i mean if you you know if you imagine most people's nightmares it it often involves something like that right being in front of a load of people not knowing what you're supposed to do so um i don't know whether that makes me a perfectionist <clears throat> but i but i when you do know what you're doing it's really good fun. This episode is sponsored by Fire Away Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK with over 150 stores. With their fresh quality ingredients and unique pizzas, they will have you coming back for more. Use code JAMES20 for 20% off. That's JAMES20 for 20% off. See, I've not got a fucking clue what I'm doing, <laughs> mate. I'm genuinely out. Like, there's no questions here. Yeah. My mind works. Three questions. If I'm interviewing someone, I'll think three questions. I'll create yeah. like a story in my mind. That's just, if I sit with questions, it throws me off my interview because yeah. then I just, it's too planned for me. Even though when I see you looking at the wires and that, you're, you're kind of sussing everything out and how you would maybe set it up or how you would maybe have it safer. Mm. For me, I'm fuck it. Wires are everywhere. No notes. We just shoot the shit like it's amazing. How long would it take you to then memorise a song for you to go, okay, I've got it? Oh, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it would it would probably, I mean, it takes, it takes, um, kind of takes the whole tour, really. <laughs> I that... mean, to, to, it, there's, it's a bit like, it's like how well, do, how well, how well do you want to know something? I mean, you could yeah i mean if if i compare like even even newer songs uh to older songs i mean older songs i can literally do them in my sleep like i can do them yeah i can i can i can i can daydream i think that's the thing it's like on like if you're if the adrenaline's up and you can do the song and you can daydream or it's it's for me it's like it's almost like a sign that you're you you're able to relax mm -hmm. as if your mind can actually wander away from it um yeah that and that takes years what's it like when your adrenaline goes through the roof because you seem quite a, a cool character where even your videos everything's quite it's a breeze is that because you it's repetition repetition over the time with you, or have you learned to be that be that way over the years to just be 
kind of cool and collective? Um, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call myself a, a relaxed person. I, I do. I do think that you, if you're, I don't want to say discipline because I'm not. Dis, I'm really, really, actually, really lazy. But um, I do. I do think that you. Um, it's worth doing things properly somehow. Um, yeah, I mean, when when I, when I was younger, I used to, I used to burn myself out trying to because you, you you're worried that you're not doing anything well enough. And actually, as you get older, you realise what you actually have to do is to is to do a little bit every day, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like as long as you do one thing every day. I think, and actually, if you try to go too hard, you you end up giving up because you tire yourself out. Whereas, whereas I think, so um, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm definitely not relaxed though. But I I do make sure I know what I'm doing. When are you? Which at, makes it seem like I'm relaxed. When are you at your happiest? Uh, well, when I'm on the tour bus, yeah, I love a tour bus. It reminds me of, um, going camping. It's kind of like, it's, it's the sleeping while you're driving thing because, because you never normally sleep while you're driving, do you? Because mm -hmm. e even if you're in a car, you're, you're sat up. But when we were kids, we used to sleep on the way, you know, on on holiday. And um, there's something I think in that 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 I uh, I get from and and just um, just waking up in a new place every day. Do you think that ch takes you back to your childhood when you're on a there's tour de bus? There's definitely something <clears throat> about sleeping on a tour bus that takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would. Um, it's. It's definitely not glamorous, um, a tour bus. It's, um, it's a bit like, I imagine being on a submarine, um, uh, you know, there's like 15 <laughs> yeah. people sort of really, I mean, you're really in a space that's about this big, but there's 15 of you for weeks. So it's, um, but you have this, you have a bunk, you know, which is, which is just a single bed with a curtain and uh i think i think it it suits my there's something about having all of your belongings in a really small space that that really works for me because mm -hmm. i i am very lazy same yeah same <laughs> it's mad how i get shit done <laughs> But yeah. then again, you've you've smashed it as well. So there must be. Do you think we only think that to push ourselves to keep trying, though? Yeah, I mean, I th I think it's with me because if if you'd have if you'd have been if you'd have worked with me at the at the jobs I did before I did music. Uh, for a living i think you would have thought i was i was never going to amount to anything because i was so bad i was so awful at my jobs um what sort of jobs did you do uh well i my first job was burger king but um my kids always tell me that i'm constantly talking about burger king which i didn't think i did do that but apparently i always talk about burger king do you still wheat from burger king <laughs> <laughs> i uh i i think when you eat three burger kings a day you get sick of them you uh yeah i don't i don't really um <clears throat> i prefer burger king to anything else to be fair the chips and yeah, the burgers are yeah. tastier i believe in my own opinion yeah yeah uh i definitely had too many burger kings there is such thing <laughs> how was that feeling in burger king 
Yeah, I mean, it was... Um, Did you have any... No, no disrespect to anybody that works there, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because a lot of kids who work there just going through their life trying to get away. Yeah. But did you have that vision that there was more? Yeah, well, I was, I was, I was trying to be a musician. Like, there was no doubt about it. I was... Um, I was trying to be um, a producer, really, um, making making music, garage or house music or or rap music. Uh, but it didn't seem it didn't seem possible, really, Why? To, to be well t to be living in Birmingham. And to say that you were gonna that that you were gonna be a musician, it just wasn't something that. Um, I mean, yeah, it's like, well, how how are you gonna do that then, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think, I don't think I ever really uh, knew how that was gonna happen, but I certainly tried, and. I kept just, I mean, back then it was, it was just, you know, sending demos to people. I mean, that's, things are so much better now. Uh, you, you just have to find an audience, right? I mean, you can, we can be here now just talking about stuff. And then really the only thing you've got to do is to, is to give people conversations that they like listening to. It's really that simple, right? Mm -hmm. And if you do that enough times, you will be rewarded by the algorithm. But uh, when I was trying to do it, it was it felt like you would you were going to have to get the attention of someone in London, basically, or or just at a label or something. So, uh, so yeah, I spent a lot of time making music and sending people the music and never hearing back, really. How was that feeling? Rejection? Well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I mean, looking back on it, the rejection was because I wasn't making music that was very interesting. It would either be something a bit like something else or it just wouldn't wouldn't be very good um and i think you can at the time it would be easy to think well you know what am i doing wrong but actually if i was if i was advising someone now that you know there's there's so much music out there that that is a bit bit like something else that's always the case it's all most music is a bit like something else isn't it mm -hmm. it's very rare that stuff isn't you know that that's um that's got something new about it or or um it's just really well done and and so in a way i think maybe probably i probably didn't have any had it have it any harder than anyone else i just had to find the thing that was that was different that people would notice but um but i do think you there isn't that feeling now where you're you know the gatekeepers i don't think that really it doesn't really exist anymore how gatekeeping did, yeah how did you get your break did you made the max tape and went right into one of the big, I, I, big companies um, yeah i did a song called has it come to this and I sent it to Locked On. Well, I sent it to a few different people, but Locked On um, got back to me, and, and uh, I was in, I was incredibly lucky because um, because they were really really good people. Um, I think Garage Music was a bit a bit like the Wild West. I think. And I was really lucky to to find uh, a corner of garage that was um, that were good people. 
what was that feeling like when someone gave you an opportunity? How old you? Where you was that? Two thousand two. Yeah, so I I was about twenty at that point. And is that two thousand two ish? Uh, yeah, I mean it was it was um, it was two thousand really when I when I sent them the stuff, uh, and then probably it would have it, it went into the charts. Eighteen number eighteen, it um, something <clears throat> like that. It went into the charts. Uh, I think that would have been either the end of two thousand or beginning of two thousand one, and then and then. Um, then and then the album came, you know, after that original part material, but the single came before. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a funny like looking back on it. It was, it was more of a feeling like, fuck, you know, I better not fuck this up. That was really all I was thinking. Don't fuck this up. So there was just a lot of. I didn't allow myself to enjoy it, which which I'm glad I I'm glad I didn't. I think if you allow yourself to enjoy things at 21, it's uh, it's a bad. You shouldn't be, you know. Yeah, I would have went missing, mate. The drink, the drugs would have been. I would have been at my fucking prime then, mate. With yeah. the madness. Like I say, when I grew up, 2004 for me was. Probably your biggest year, from my own opinion. Like mm. you say, blinded by the lights, mm. dry your eyes, fit, fit, but you know what? Like mm. Massive. It was banger after banger. I think number one was it. Um, mm. Dry your eyes went to number one. Yeah, yeah. Um, what a year! See when you, that number hits number eighteen, and then you start doing well. Like you say, is it to keep grounded because you know there's only you only really get one chance at this industry. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I never really looked at it like an industry. I mean, it is, but, um, and, and actually the, the feeling that I had was, was actually that I sort of imagined that everyone knew what they were doing. Uh, and, and, the, and looking back on it, there was some, I worked with some incredible, incredible people like my, um, my creative at Warner, a creative, uh, they do everything that isn't the music, basically. So he was called Alan Parks, and he was, you know, be between him and and you know a few of us, that we uh, we made some you know great artwork and and music videos and stuff. But I don't think I don't think it's the norm. You know that that sort of level of excellence, you have to you have to find it and and almost and there's a lot that you have to ignore. I think it's a lot, or, or there's a lot you have to say no to. Like what? Well, um, just things like. So I mean, one thing one thing that I did I was kind of on my own with, in a way, was was like the like the the, cl the clothes that I wore because everybody in it felt like everybody thought that it wasn't very fashionable and so I would they would sort of they would sort of give me they would say oh do you want to do you want to see a stylist or something and um I think that and I probably should have seen a stylist but I would have ended up looking like a lot of other things from that time. Whereas I was very, very, very sure that I want, that, that there were, there weren't people on the TV that looked like the people that I, I saw growing up. So, so you, you have to, uh, yeah, you, you, so it's not a case of like, Uh, sort of focusing and and being really um conscientious it's about knowing knowing what you want to see enough that you can say no to everyone and uh and carry you know carry the vision that uh it's like a little candle flame that you have to try and not go out you know 
Will you ever scared of saying no in case they fucked you off? Because you know in that industry, it's... well, there's 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 always there's always if you say if you you know if you do a big enough no, uh, people think you're a pain in the ass, aren't it? So I mean, when 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 I did when I did the album, it's just little things like it's like I did the album, and then we were putting the single out, and you know the radio say. We, we can't play it. it it needs to be more um we need you need to get someone in to mix it and and make it more um higher production values and i think a lot of people would would crack under that pressure and say yeah we should send it to a mix engineer and get it done properly but actually what ends up happening is is it it sort of dates it dates it because it because because everything it's it's kind of fashion everything's got a everyone's got a way of doing things at the moment that is not necessarily better it's just it's just fashionable right now mm -hmm. so so it's very easy to end up wearing the same clothes as everyone else and giving your your music the same sound as everything else and it dates it uh but i was i was young enough and i guess i was quite angry in some way i don't know just cuz just cuz that was my age and i was like no this this is this is what i'm doing and um and and so there is a lot of that wall to hell with you know if you if you if you can't take this, then I, I don't want to give it to you sort of thing. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's saying no is definitely the, the hardest thing. Did you understand about royalties and business with all that side of things? Because we know now some of the artists get buttons compared to the ones who are producing and writing. Did you know or did you have to get fucked over a few times to then understand it? No, I, I never, I never got fucked over. Uh, never i mean um i think you i've i've never encountered anyone really that that was um malicious really i mean all i've ever encountered really is just a lot of i want to say no not laziness but but it's um people just have a way that they think everything should be and also they it's a desperation really people are people are desperate to to for their business to their businesses to continue to be in business which is which is very difficult in music so um yeah i mean you, you um but I, I don't think it's i mean i think coming back to to what i said before i think if you if you if you if you're able to say exactly what it is that you're doing and what you're you know if like a good example is like a if you take a big advance right so if you if you get record labels to argue amongst each other and you end up in a bidding war right someone ends up paying i don't know half a million to sign you or whatever um which is great but you're then in a position where you've got to be a pop artist you have to be in the top 10 and as soon as as soon as you're in that situation where they're under huge pressure for this to sell this many records or do this many streams it can only be bad for your music because because they're so desperate at that point. So, so I always, I always, I always knew that. I mean, actually, what, what I was trying to do at the beginning was to not have an advance. I wanted to, I wanted to over. I mean, I realised after that actually that's that's a bit naive. But it's it's, I think it's better than having a massive advance and putting you know, and the guy basically is going to lose his job if you don't go to number one, that's a terrible environment in which to, 
try and do exciting new music that gets people much better to be to not have that pressure and to feel like you're all against the world and that you but you're doing things in your own way yeah like a pressure cooker so yeah it feels that people lose the the purpose of music and who they are because there's so much pressure so they then don't find what they actually set out to do and it's I, I, th I think i think i think it, that I think that's what everyone does with everything. Yeah. You know, I think that's what you will face. That will be the biggest thing you face. It will be, you'll do a couple of things. They will really connect because you, because it will be with someone who's really, you know, got crazy stories or something. And then you'll, you'll, you won't be able to help it, but you'll be looking at your numbers and you'll be thinking, well, I, when I was doing that, that was really big, and and now this isn't as big. So so when when you're sort of when you're growing, it's it's very easy to be be yourself. But the moment you start feeling like the you're up against it in any way, or, or you're not getting the same feeling, uh, that's when you that's when you start doing what you think people want you to do. And actually, it's a race to the bottom. And, and I think most, most of any creative industry is a bit of a race to the bottom. There's, you know, there's people that do things that are massively exciting and new, and then kind of pretty much most of the industry is, is trying to, um, do that until the next thing comes along yeah see when you 2004 came number one album and then fit but you know what how was that feeling once you had banging after banging after banging it was fit but you know what and then dry your eyes mm. and then blinded by the lights like how was that feeling for you did you feel what you were achieving was unbelievable or were you just in that zone like you were talking about there it's like a bubble to keep taking things to a new level yeah i mean it's um it was uh it was great i mean i i find it very difficult separating what i what i achieved with with that point in my life anyway because because life is great isn't it when you're 23 mm -hmm. it's great so i i'm not sure but you know i just i just happen to be um uh, traveling the world no it was it was amazing it's amazing it's um it's difficult to know where i think the one the one thing that you have to have to develop is is uh discipline in i think most people you have you're sort of constrained. You feel like you feel like everyone else is constrained by by their by their life. You know, you know, you have to go to work on Monday. If you don't go to work on Monday, you don't have a job. But if you're a musician, that doesn't really apply. <laughs> so you do have to, at a very young age, you have to develop discipline. You, you, no one's going to stop you from just not recording another album. It, it, it sort of, it winds me up a bit when people read the newspapers and, and think that there's some sort of evil industry out there that's... Um, that's killing all these pure musical talents somehow. And I, I think, A, the musicians are way more cynical and uh, savvy than, than you think. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, of course, of course, if you, um, if you allow people to take advantage of you, then um then they will there'll there'll always be someone there 
to take advantage of you, but I, you, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a level of growing up. I think that you have to do that. I think other people don't have to do until maybe they're a bit older. Uh, but there's also an element where you don't grow up as well because, um, you can, act, you can act like a child, but, you, but there's almost uh, behind all of that acting like a child, there is a, there is a, there's a knowledge, there's a knowledge that, that you could completely fuck all of this up if you don't have at least a mind to make sure the album gets done and make sure it's good. Dry Your Eyes, your biggest song. Like, how did you know how much of a tune that was going to be? Because if I do podcast, you know, okay, I've got that one. Did you have that feeling of this is the one? No. Um, I mean, it was obvious. I think once, once we handed it in, or once my manager heard it, it was. Um, it be, yeah, it became a thing. Uh, did I mean, mate, mate, yeah? I, I, it's a, it's so long ago that I I don't actually think I really remember it all that well. But um, no, I mean, I th I think I did. I think I did know that they were singles. I think, but. Um, it's it's impossible to imagine your own music as being the soundtrack to people's lives. I mean, you that's why you do it, right? You 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 want people to you want that to happen, and you try for try to make songs that people like. But um, when you're so close to it like that, you you hear things in a completely different way. You, you know, you hear all of the things that you you could have done or wanted to do. So that came out, smash hat. What's the inspiration behind it? Was it a breakup of yours or was it just something that you'd... Well, that written? album that <clears throat> album was a, was a story, right? I mean, it was... Um, I was really into script writing and, and um, yeah, film... film film structure and so i decided to do an album that was a story from from beginning to end and the 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 way yeah that just that just happened to be the moment in the story when um when when that happened but uh but no it was it was i know in my head what that was what that was about you know what what um i think we all have one breakup in our life that completely or or maybe to put it another way you know you have a relationship where you think that's going to fix everything uh and then you and then maybe you um you you cling on to that too much and then and but actually that's the worst thing you can do right because because that just makes that's just really unattractive right yeah you suffocate it yeah so uh i think that's what that song's about is that 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 one thing that i think we've all got i mean hopefully we've all got because um I wouldn't want to meet a person who hadn't been through that. I think they wouldn't have, there wouldn't be a lot of humility in them. Yeah. Love is powerful, but love is painful. Mm -hmm. like everybody's been through heartache, some some more than others, is painful. Mm. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world when you receive it. But like you say, we crave love. Relationships heal you for a very short time because it feels good, it's fresh, somebody likes mm. you, somebody's committed to you, but then the cracks appear because it, it brings up old traumas of the both people. Yeah, and then yeah. that's where the, 
the niggling starts and then the falling out and then it's the pain. Yeah. But men struggle, I believe, more than women with breakups because we don't really talk about them. So we self-medicate, mm. we hide from it and, and it's painful. And then once you've had a bad relationship, you're kind of scared to do the same into another relationship because a lot of people self-sabotage because it's so fucking painful. Mm. A breakup is is worse than death. It's because you, you feel it and you miss that connection. And for me, my own opinion, everybody just wants to feel love on this planet. Yeah, I that thing where you push someone away because you're scared that that they're it's like you're doing the thing that you're really scared of happening, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That is such a human thing, isn't it? Because yeah. it, it actually makes no sense whatsoever to fuck up a relationship because you're scared of, I guess, rejection, is yeah. it? Yeah, it's, 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 you're just protecting yourself because we don't truly become vulnerable because when you become vulnerable to love or vulnerable to being hurt, that's when you'll find your purest form of love because you've surrendered to mm. that feeling of getting hurt. Mm. And no matter what, we're all going to be hurt with a relationship, whether she passes or you pass, we're all going to separate one time. So yeah. why not just give it a go and go, do you know what, fuck it, enjoy it. If it doesn't last, then so be it. I feel as if so many people are stuck in ruts in relationships. Everybody's kind of confused with social media and technology these days. It's not really as committed as back yeah i mean i don't know how you feel like for me having kids was when i realized that it wasn't about me right and that actually made me a bit happier because i stopped thinking uh it was a, really about me i mean but, but i think yeah, and and I kind of feel the same with a. It's kind of made me feel the same with a relationship as well. It's it's. Yeah. I think when you. When you stop thinking it's all about you, and I don't mean. Because I think when I was younger, I used to think, well, what is it? You know, it, you hear older people saying th stuff like that, and you think, well, what is it about then if it's not about me? But it becomes about you. It is, as, I think it is as, it works as a selfish thing as well. Even if you're selfish, it works to not worry about yourself yeah. and worry about other people. <clears throat> because it's, I, th I feel like um, we've all got so much time now, haven't we, to think, to think about things. I mean, even if, you know, even if, if, if you've got a job that you hate, that's an awful lot of time to think about the job that you hate. Uh, and so it's the moment that you, you're, um, you're releasing yourself of that. Of that feeling yeah. of like am i happy the moment that you release yourself from that actually you start well, you, you're closer to something that is happiness how did you deal with being a household name then and becoming a celebrity how did you handle that uh well having just said that i i don't think i ever sabotaged a relationship because i was scared of losing it i <clears> definitely <throat> probably sabotaged my career <laughs> Uh, because I just wanted to be really honest, I think. I think that's what I was going for, was honesty. And it worked at the beginning when people saw themselves in me. They, the honest, that, that worked. But then I think I think what happens is is you you just become a completely different person, or or, or you or you don't feel like you've you, you feel like the same person, but you you suddenly start talking about things that people don't 
really um, can't get their heads around because it's it's like um, yeah you, you're living a different life. So I um, yeah I just always just did whatever I was feeling. But I think that that is becomes a bit of a cliche. Yeah. I was trying to get that audience to connect, but that album, people connected, people still it was timeless, people still mm. listening to that day. How is it when money comes, fame comes, attention from the boy who's working in Burger King to then being a household name? Mm. Do you feel as if you can lose the connection because then what you're singing with doesn't really feel the same because you're at a different level in your life or does that not come into play? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's an, there's a thing with music as well where it's, it's, it's always about, it's always about young people because, because most of the people that listen to music are young because they're, they're, the, they're the people that have, or the, most of the people that listen to new music are young because those are the, people that have got the time to to um and it is about discovering new things at that age so the industry if there is an industry uh it's all focused on that really and 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 rightfully so so i think i think it's not just about suddenly um you know staying in nice hotels or going to, you know, award ceremonies or whatever. It's also, I think, just when you sort of age out of that, you, you naturally just start sounding like your parents. You know? <laughs> because you listen to Eminem's old music, you feel the pain, you hear the pain. Yeah. Trailer Park, but then when you become a multi millionaire, Oscars, there's something mm. irrelevant that goes missing. For me, he's still a genius, the best ever, but... You can see the music change for years and you've got to change to progress and like you're saying, hit mm. that connection. But yeah. you do see it, a lot of people change and it, it never hits again. No. But do you, because you had another album, it went straight to number one again. Yeah. Were you just, everything was everything making sense for you was in your mind that that was the, the path that you were on, that was the right one? Yeah, I mean, definitely the, mu I was, it was very clear. It was always very clear to me what music I wanted to do and l looking back, yeah, I don't think it could ever have been any different. And, um, and it's still, it's still like that now. I still, I still have a very, I, I can't really change what I'm, what I'm doing really. But, but yeah, it's, um, no, it's, it's not, a. Uh, most musicians are, it's kind of it's kind of the opposite way around or or we were a bit like um you know those people that you know those people at school that were like really sort of popular and like good at sports and stuff and then they never really achieve anything that was me you, well <laughs> i played I, professional football I, everything but i hit the bottle and the sniff <laughs> i fucked it mate i went fucking missing for years i had every ability <laughs> As I could ask for it, football, the pace, the, the fire. But it's, uh, as soon as I touched drink at 14, 15, I just fucking loved it. And then the sniff came in and I just, I could get the women as well. And I just, I loved that life. Yeah. I gave up that positive, happy. I probably, I don't know what would have happened now in my life, but yeah. everything's d played out lovely the way it is now. But yeah, it's my, I chose the other side of it. Yeah, yeah. I just fucking loved it. I loved the madness. You love the madness. The, do you, because there's a thing that, um, you know, what do they say? It's like, if you want freedom, then it's like discipline gives you freedom. Yeah. It's that sort of, well, if you spend three hours in the morning, you know, doing all your work, then you can spend the afternoon in the park yeah you know drinking buckfast if you want yeah the good stuff <laughs> but, but uh yeah so so almost as i get older i'm like more into the this or the i'm more into the discipline than i am the freedom because that because actually once you've once you've achieved a few things you actually realize it's actually that's that's 
how you feel happy actually mm -hmm. um the discipline and the consistency is, is key for anything yeah talent will take you so far but i think it's if you're working 18 minutes a day on your craft for a year you're 95 percent ahead of mm. other people who are in the yeah, same yeah, craft yeah, like yeah. it's unbelievable with consistency and dedication yeah. i just thought i was a footballer from the ages of, i thought i'd made it not realizing a step now, if i had the mindset now yeah. be a different ball game but it's just the consistency and like you say discipline cutting yeah. away the negatives how did you celebrate then were you partying yourself did back you, then no let, let, let me just like so what was there was there not a part of you that knew that if you stopped um kicking the ball well mm -hmm. or as well as everyone else that you wouldn't be able to party and you know girls and stuff it got but, me it got me that far till 16 like scotland boys hibs signing an s form <clears throat> so i was drinking 14 15 then the drugs came i was still competing but then i, I noticed other people were becoming sharper yeah and little inch of getting the ball away from me yeah. i become more aggressive as well because i'm hung over yeah my yeah, speed yeah. wasn't the same so i was doing a lot more fouls but i decided fuck it i don't care anymore because right. as long as i had women as long as there was drugs there or drink yeah, nightclubs yeah, yeah. i just went fully i knew what i was doing was slipping but i never had the balls to go okay i'm in trouble here yeah so i just denied it and went down the other way yeah, and then yeah, yeah. every year the teams got worse the, the fitness got worse and yeah. then I basically chucked it at 19 yeah, and then I came yeah. back again in my 20s but by that time you're too far gone yeah and and so now what's what's different now I'm not drinking I'm not taking drugs my vision is clearer my frequency is higher I see things but, differently but what what so so did it just go so far that you just had to yeah it just got that bad turned 30 I read a book called The Power of Now yeah changed my life it can't yeah. all about the present moment because he's a mad guy isn't yeah he? we're in that pub environment and you've got your uncle saying he could have been a contender or a footballer yeah i was turning into that guy yeah the people i played with signed for man united i went on and played for celtic or whatever i was better than him yeah. talking shit yeah, i wasn't yeah. wasn't better than him because they've made it i didn't yeah i was i knew i was that guy so i just stayed over everything became clean and then i became passionate about a podcast created this and then i understood yeah. the vision started listening and watching other people successful people success leaves clues so started following their suit and then you find your own little rhythm find out who you are and then i just know the only person who fails now is me yeah 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 i don't think um i mean i think yeah i think y you uh it's fascinating. Do do you um, do you think that will? Do you think you would ever be able to celebrate your? Because you've already been really successful, haven't you? No, yeah. But you're not. Do you think you're enjoying it? Do you think you're able to stop and say? And to look back. No. Because it becomes not an But addiction. is that because, sorry to interrupt, That's is that okay. because of the the shit that you went through leading up to when you were 30? Yeah. I think yeah. you become scared as well because I know how far I've come, but I know one night on the booze, I rip the whole ceiling down and I destroy everything that I've built for five, six years. Yeah. One night. One no, drink. I mean, I wasn't yeah. talking about like drinking and stuff. Yeah, no, I was talking about... Uh, celebrating yeah not celebrating like that but like because it is ultimately i think it's in order to celebrate something you have to take your eye off the ball i mean that's the whole point yeah you have to you have to look back right mm -hmm. so you, you look forward but there's something quite scary about looking back because that's because you might you might crash or something yeah. yeah there's always an element of fear there so if i had the happiest ever was i think in the podcast game was hitting ten thousand views mm. in the first like three months and i hit that and i was buzzing yeah and then it became a million views 10 million yeah. 100 million 250 yeah. million now we're at half a billion yeah but there's no 
excitement it just becomes nah, yeah yeah what next and, that, and, that's, and that's i think you, that. you do you do have to be careful yeah i mean that that's that's what i would say is that it becomes all you've got all you've got is is that is that excitement that things are getting better or, or that that thing that gets you up in the morning that's all you've got really so i sort of it's like it's all it's all well and good like putting all this together and and you know and sending emails out or whatever you do and and making stuff happen but if you're not making you happen you you end up getting tired you think oh what you know you you if you stop enjoying sending the emails out or 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 working out who's going to be on your next show and enjoying that really enjoying it then you're going through the motions and um yeah for for me the most important thing is is finding a way to feel excited about stuff and often that involves i think changing what it is you're doing in some way or yeah or, or doing things that scare you i think yeah do, i think if you do stuff that scares you it's always a sort of there's a reward there because when i interview people like this i love conversations i thrive mm. on this because i'm not free thinking my mind doesn't go like an octopus all over the place i'm yeah. in the zone i'm in the now and then after that it's okay what next but then i know i've got free time with my kids and my family i enjoy that but mm. with now it's like a business where you just know as patterns you know how to to make it work you're on mm. this one-way track and you know how to keep going through it and hitting targets and hitting goals but when you hit the goals i know in my mind now numbers don't mean anything it's an illusion that doesn't yeah. define you as a person so everything yeah, you do I mean, in your life is a yeah. feeling it does i mean it does change other people you know you uh there's that you know when that um you know you've changed well actually y you haven't changed it's everyone else that's changed if if you um if you become the the number one podcaster of all time and and you know rishi sunak's calling you up to to come down and you know so that you can help him with the election or whatever that is that's not you is it that's other people changing how the how, how they behave but those things become so influential on your life that it's very difficult like like for instance if you hate the tories right but then the prime minister wants to come on here, right? What are you going to say? Are you going to say no to the, to the, you know, one of the most important people in the country coming on your show? That's what I'm talking about. It's like the principles become harder and harder and harder to, to enforce. And then all of a sudden you're, you know, your, your, your wife and your, your kids and, Everyone around you changes. That's the difficult bit. Did you see that when the success came? Other people changing around you? Uh, yeah, I was always able to... Uh, I was always quite brutal, I think. With, with um, I always did things that didn't make any sense, put it that way. So uh, I think people, people got used to it. Do you think because as well? Do you think that's a protection? Because sometimes the paranoia can kick in. Who's good? Who's wrong? Who's good for the career? Who's not? Like you say, yeah, it I mean, you a do, selfish you, way of thinking. You you have you always you know you have those like those relatives that you see at um, Christmas and stuff, and they and uh, or you know f friends of friends and stuff, and they're kind of like oh, you know, you know if I mean if you, you know what why aren't you doing, um, you know reality tv or or it's kind of well you know if, this is great what you're doing but you know if, if you um 
if you did if you went on like morning TV or whatever and or, or you know Big Brother or something, then they they can only see it in terms of like well I read you in I sometimes see you written about in the middle of the newspaper. But if you were on the front of the newspaper, you would be, and and it's hard, it is hard to describe, to explain to those people that actually um, that's not true. Uh, because if you end up on the front of the newspaper, you, uh, people forget why you're even there. And, uh, and actually it's important to, to, uh, for people to feel like there's a thing that you do and mm -hmm. and that you're not trying to um get in everyone's faces uh but yeah it's um all of those things that i think i mean the the classic one is you know when a band goes on tour because they've just had a big tax bill and it's kind of like oh you know you're you're all getting back together that's great you must have really missed each other it's kind of like no you you can boast a bit <laughs> <laughs> so um i think it's yeah i think if you do things that make no sense uh then you i guess yeah you do train people that you're not going to be um ultimately you're doing everyone a favor by by doing the right thing because in the end, history is kind to you. Mm -hmm. See, when when did it all come on top for you? The fame, the money, because I know you've struggled with your health as well. Was that partly because everything that you've done through the years working to be successful? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I just used to work. I just used to work too hard. That's really, uh, and, um, and, it's it's yeah it, it's different now i think maybe but it was kind of expected it was not a shock i think um you know misbehaving at parties and stuff it was it was actually i think if you'd have asked someone at my record label they probably would have said well to be honest we hardly ever saw him uh he was always either on tour or, or in Barnet. But, uh, you, um, yeah, it, it, I mean, once you become, there was a, yeah, there were, when I was doing the, I did a Reebok campaign where I was, I was on the side of buses and then it makes you realize with the, with the tabloids, they sort of, when you read the middle of the tabloid where the 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 stuff that's happening you know the 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 celebrity news it's really just a lot of it's either made up or convenient for for because because there's a selection of people that are the people that people care about at that point and so by hook or crook, they're going to think of something to say. So what ends up happening is people, people, um, they read those stories and believe it, but it's not really, it's not really like that in real life. It's more, it's more, uh, it's a, it's more of a, there's an act, there's an act, there's a certain amount of it, which is an act, which I think people feel like they have to do. Uh, so I, um, yeah, I, my, my, my biggest problem was that I worked too hard. I just burned out constantly. I would, and so I would have to sort of take time off and then, and then I come back to it and, work too hard again so when you say burn out is that mentally where you just become fatigued and drained and be depressed or anything yeah i mean i would do yeah i would do um i would just do hundreds of versions of the same song basically <laughs> do you become psychotic with 
the business? Uh, yeah, not not the business really. Um, I think you you don't have to be you don't have to know anything about business as long as you as long as you get what you're doing right you you and you and you don't work with people that are you work with people that are trustworthy you know that's that's fairly easy to work out trustworthy people people that don't i mean a really good sign is if they don't fuck other people over then they're not going to fuck you over yeah that's that's key right i mean if someone's talking shit about someone to you they're talking shit about you yeah and that was even when i was like 21 that was really obvious to me but that's a good thing a lot of people don't suss that out until there's too many mistakes yeah and there's no going back yeah did anybody ever try and pull you aside to say look mate you're, you're going off the rails here you're fucking up we, we see you burning out take a break <clears throat> or are you so caught up in just trying to yeah i mean yeah the I've always had lots of people around me that, that care. Um, but there is only so much that anyone can do really. Uh, and it goes both ways. I think if you're, if you're a really, really motivated person, then you're going to find a way of, of being, uh, successful or, or you're going to get to where you want to get to. And I think, and I think the same goes is, is if you're really destructive, if you're really, if you really want to mess, mess things up, there's nothing anyone can really do. Were you a part in yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have to live up to that character who was in the music videos, the drinking and the partying? I mean, I, I, yeah, I, well, there is a lot of that, you know, there, there's a lot of, um, yeah, people, people, it's, that's what you mean to them, you know, is, 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 uh, yeah. So, so I've never, I've never had to, um, I've been offered a lot of drinks. Yeah. And, uh, the uh but i didn't want to i think you have to want to destroy yourself i think certain people want to destroy themselves I, I never i don't i don't think i ever really um was in danger of of going completely being a complete lunatic where did the name the streets come from uh i don't really know really i mean i wanted to i wanted to um i guess it was I wanted to do I wanted to do something that represented sort of all of life uh and I wanted to make British music that was as lyrical as the American music that I made but I don't really know why I called it the streets really. How long did you take a break for? Well, I mean, I'm always, I'm always, um, I'm no, I've never really taken a break really. So you're I, always still working behind the scenes. I, I stopped doing the streets because I wanted to make a film. How was that feeling? It was pretty terrible really, because I spent almost, I spent years and years not, doing anything well i was djing which i loved and i was directing music videos and stuff um yeah and and it was um looking back on it it was all really it was all really important but you don't know that at the time because really this film that I've just made is, you know, it's, it's DJing. It's, I was producing a lot of music that I was playing when I was DJing. 
it's directing. So it's all of the things that I was doing that have, that I didn't really know why I was doing came together into one thing. Have you always wanted to do acting? Because have you been in Doctor Who and then Betweeners? Did you mm. write the song, the song, the soundtrack? Yeah, for I, did, I did, the, did. I did the music for the Inbetweeners. Yeah, a mega yeah. film. Yeah, it was, yeah, oh. it was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was. What was that feeling again? Like everything you've done, you've always been successful. Yeah, I mean, funnily <clears throat> enough, actually, we watched, we watched the Inbetweeners on on the on the bus on this tour, and it was. When, when, when they were putting it together, and I was, I was writing the music. Um, it, I was watching it in bits. You know, you what, with with anything, creative or, or you, you know, you you kind of don't want to see how the the sausage is made, do you? It's it's kind of like. It comes in bits and then they're constantly changing the size of it to, to work out, um, you know, to work out where the joke should be landing, the timing of, of, the, of the shots. So you're sort of just watching this thing over and over again. And then, and you kind of, you know that everything's working somehow, but you don't actually, there's no, there's no like vibe because you're just doing your job. And then it all came together and then, and then, and then we went to the premiere and it's, and it, and it was, um, they had a tremendous time of it and, and I was really, really, um, proud of them and, and, um, and happy for them, but it was one of those things and it just became this huge thing, but you don't, it wasn't actually until I watched it with the guys, uh, what, I mean, is it like 10 Ten years ago, maybe more. I think Any more. But the film, I film. I think the yeah, film about ten, twelve years ago, maybe. maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago, anyway. Yeah. And we watched it, and it was just like everyone was just. It was just really funny, but it was a really strange feeling because I, I made the music, and and it's so so. It's not my thing at all. Um, it's there. It. it they uh i was kind of had nothing to do with it really but but it was like every time something happened there would be like my song was in the back it's very it was a very strange it's a very strange feeling is that because you weren't at the forefront in the video yourself or no i don't mean that i mean <clears throat> I, th I think it no i mean it, all i was saying is is that i was able i'm able to enjoy it I mean, I, I would never be able to enjoy my own music. Like I couldn't, I couldn't put on my album. Like that's, that would be really weird. I'm the same with podcast. I fucking cringe yeah. listening to yeah. my voice. I mean, it's, and, 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 <clears throat> you know, and so you should, it's, I think, <laughs> no, no, but like. I think some people love their own shit, but. Really? I just, I, like every interview I do, every, after it's finished, I feel as if I should have done more. I don't feel. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I, that was that the odd time, one yeah. or twice out of four hundred interviews. But I always feel mm, I should have done better there. Yeah, and that's that's good. That's good. But uh, no, I think in the case of um, yeah, in case of in between us, it's it's a weird thing where uh, I was able to enjoy it because it wasn't me that did it, but it still has an element of of something that I was involved in, which is it was a, it was a but it was a really good, it was a really good feeling to, to, um, yeah, it's, it's hard for people. I mean, you, you know, you asked me about sort of dry your eyes. It's, it's impossible to have any, uh, concept of, of what that song means to anyone else, but yourself. Yeah. So the movie you've been working on for the last 10 years, mm. how did that come about and why did you want to get into the movie business? Well, I, I've got no interest in the movie business, but it feels like it's what I should be doing. I mean, it, it's what I want to be doing. It's much harder to make a film 
than it is to make an album in a way. And I've just been, yeah, I've been, I've been building up to this my whole life. You, uh, you start writing songs about something in particular, and then it's, it's, you always imagine what it would look like. I, I can't believe there's a novelist out there that doesn't imagine their novel as a film in some way. I mean, that's what they are really, aren't they? Scripts. They're, they're, they're films that mm -hmm. happen in your head. And there is, there's a, there's a big difference between saying something and actually showing it because when you say it, it can be anything. You know, if I say uh, a man walked into the room and he looked just like my, my old father and he had a very intimidating coat on. I mean, everybody's got their own idea of what my words mean and they sort of slot them in to their own lives. Whereas when you make a film, you have to, you know, that, that coat that your father's wearing in the story has to, you have to decide what that coat is, what color it is. So it's, um, it's more, it's more grown up. I think making a film, it's much more about people getting the best out of people and deciding what everything is. And, 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 and then at the same time, there's a money ele element to it where everything has to be paid for. So, uh, I think for someone like me, it's, it's, it's just natural. When's this movie out and what's that about? Can you give much information about it? Yeah, it's called The Darker the Shadow, The Brighter the Light. And it's based on my time as a DJ. So I'm in it. And it's a musical where the, the voiceover is, are the songs. So the music, the musical element to the film is are the thoughts that are happening in my head as the story's happening. And when will this be out? It's probably going to be out in uh, well, in the next few months, hopefully. How are you feeling with it? Is it that because it's took ten yeah. years? How? What's the? Is it nervousness? Are you anxious? Are you excited to get it out? But everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, <clears throat> I'm excited to get it out. It's it doesn't uh, finishing the thing was was the hardest thing I've ever done by a long shot. So it wasn't. Uh, yeah, but since I finished it, I've just felt really, uh, really relaxed, really. I, I don't really, everything's a bonus. You know how, like you were saying, when you've got, um, you've got your podcast and, you know, you had the first 10,000 views and you, you end up in this sort of uh, competition with yourself somehow mm -hmm. well i don't have any of that with this film because i've never done it before so even if like no one watches it it's still done better than any other film i've done if that makes sense because because just i mean just making a film for me is um you're, you're sort of yeah, you you sort of in a in a club of like of like people that have made a film, and however bad the film is, um, it's not something that it's just it's just difficult enough to for it to be a reward in itself. Yeah. 
But it's un- I, for me, like I said, it's that you're a genius, your music, the albums that you're in between of this film. It's just all that creative mindset. It's being creative is see having that creative mind and try to create things for my own mind as well. It's just, it's an amazing feeling. And then when it comes together and you sit and watch it, you have that moment. I remember making my homeless documentary and I just I was just think, thinking out how to make it in my head while yeah. I'm doing it. And then when we've done the premiere and I get standing up, it just it was that feeling for 10 seconds. Mm. That was all worth it yeah. as well. Was, yeah. You get like a feeling of something. I, wouldn't, I don't know what bliss, but like 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Yeah. But then it kind of goes and then sometimes you're trying to get the next thing or instead of the say enjoy the journey but it's difficult when you've got yeah. my mind is blah, 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 blah. so it's hard to just live in that moment but mm. it's the final piece for me and then it's you've achieved it and then you get us at that set moment whether it's a 10-year movie or a seven day documentary or a, whatever it is there's a little feeling for me when you get it it's a beautiful feeling mm. and it's hard to explain yeah i mean i think that um yeah i think being um i mean you you know you've had people on here like in the military and stuff and it's that it's being mission orient you know if there's a mission i think i think it's good like it's that's good it's it's when there isn't a mission i think mm-hmm. it's the it's the problem uh and so as long as you have somewhere that you are somewhere that you want to be somehow uh and 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 just doing doing difficult things is that's something that I've really really started to get into almost almost just because they're difficult how's your health now uh I think it's okay I'm going to get a load of tests next week. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I do, I really like uh, cold water. I like swimming. Yeah, same. Um, and I've never been, I've never been that good at exercising, really. But I always, I mean, on stage is the place where I, uh, I always end the tour in a really good physical shape just because every night is just, it's like a spin class. Mm-hmm. When were you at your lowest? Before, I mean, uh, probably just before I was able to do music uh, for a living. Yeah, because I I always just I was never there was never any doubt for me. It was always kind of like I'm either going to make music for a living or life isn't worth living somehow. I mean that's kind of how extreme I was when I was younger. So the idea that it wasn't going to happen was uh I mean it's funny like I was only what 20 at that point. And you think you don't realize how much life there is. Do you think music saved your life? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, it's also it's also caused me a lot of uh... <laughs> pain as well. Yeah, yeah it's a I bastard. Mean, it's, a, it's a catch twenty two. I, th- I think I think the other way of looking at it is is that you should you def you need something you need something to save your life because life just goes on for so long. But adult life goes on like being a parent as well yeah. goes on for so long <laughs> yeah it's a constant worry being a parent yeah where do you go forward for the future brother just um just trying to yeah always have a have a have a goal and um yeah there's loads of things i want to do um i'd like to make i'd like to make more films yeah yeah uh, and ones that aren't uh, streets films. Well, the streets will this will ever get back together? Well, I mean, we 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 uh, because I know you released a couple albums there just a few years ago. Is that correct? Yeah, no, there's a there's a streets album that came out um, a couple of months ago, but it's um, 
it's it's how you define together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody watching, mate, that's maybe in a life of struggle right now, um, what advice would you have for them? Uh, exactly what you said. I think do something that you love uh, for an hour a day or, or, or uh, yeah, create something or make a change in your life. Make the change in your life that you want to make and stick to it for an hour a day and um, that will change your life if you don't give up. I, and the, old, the older I get, the more I believe that actually you're only ever really doing an hour a day anyway because the rest of it you're just it's like travel and you know chat sitting around the water cooler and actually i don't think any of us do more than about an hour of good work a day yeah we're just existing yeah obviously i'm a great pretender <laughs> mate i don't even fucking do any work i just bring everything but what i'm doing is right and it's making sense for me yeah i'll try i'm trying to figure it out as i go along in life mm. i might never figure it out but I know I'm away from the bad stuff, the drink, the drugs, yeah, the, the gambling, yeah. I'm fucking, but there's always a concern that might pop back in, but listen, we cross those bridges when we come to it. Mate, would you like to finish up on anything else, brother? Uh, I would like <clears throat> to uh, have a cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea's on its way, but listen, for coming on today and telling yeah. your story, you're an absolute Thanks legend. Grew up with your music, still listen to your music, and I look forward to seeing your movie, brother. God bless you and take care. Thank you.